Hello, this video will provide an overview for faculty as to how to set up a ProctorU Record Plus exam within D2L. A few things to know about ProctorU Record Plus is that the instructor will need to set up the D2L quiz as normal, and then they'll need to turn on the ProctorU Record features right within D2L. Since the record is not live proctoring, the student doesn't have to make an appointment uh, and they will just test within D2L within the regular time uh, window. The student will need to complete a room scan, show ID, have working webcam and speakers, as well as download the Chrome extension to be able to test with Record Plus, however. Once the recording is made, the ProctorU monitors will watch this recording session and email the instructor if any incidents occurred. The first step is for the instructor to download the ProctorU extension. They can do so on Chrome or Firefox browser. So an easy way to load that extension is to Google ProctorU Resource Center and then choose the ProctorU Resource Center link which will look something like this. And then scroll down and you'll be able to choose down here at the bottom the ProctorU extension and again you can pick it for Chrome or Firefox. So since I'm on Chrome, I'll choose Chrome extension and it'll open up to the Chrome web store for me to install this ProctorU extension. So I just want to add that to Chrome and add that extension. Now that this extension has been added, it will actually be right here Ooh. under my extensions right within ProctorU. To make it easily accessible, I can also pin it so that it will show just right up in my bar area. From there, I want to make sure to log in to my ProctorU account. If you are brand new to ProctorU, you have the option of creating your account here. Just make sure that you do it with your Gordon email. Your next step as the instructor is to set up the quiz within D2L. So you would just come to the quizzes area and make a new quiz and set it up as normal, or you could edit a quiz that you already have created. So when you are creating your quiz, you want to make sure to put in the name of the quiz, add in your quiz questions. You want to make sure to put a restriction start and end time on your quiz. And you want to make sure to put in a time limit of how long the students are allowed to uh, complete the quiz once they open it. You also want to come to the assessment area and make sure that you attach the assessment, uh, the quiz to an assessment to a grade item. So I want to check this button and check this button and associate it to a grade item. If I don't have a grade item already made, remember I can always choose add grade item and to create one here really quick. So all of these are just general um, quiz setup pieces. None of this should be new or special to ProctorU at all. So we just click on the two buttons and associate it to a grade item. We then determine the attempts allowed. Uh, for ProctorU, it's going to be one attempt because it's only they're going to be paying per attempt. So you would only want one attempt there. And then under the submission views, you can determine what the student will be able to see uh, upon the submission of their exam, which for the most part will just be um, their score. So once you have your quiz set up and created, you want to turn on the ProctorU auto um, setup. So that button is actually going to be under the properties tab. If you scroll down, you're going to see it underneath where your questions are. So underneath this uh, quiz questions area where you're adding in your questions, that's where you're going to see this. So you're going to slide the proctor you on. And notice that this session type is automatic. That's the only choice we have because this is the uh, we only have Record Plus for this part of the integration. If you are using uh, ProctorU Live, you're not going to go through this method. You're going to go to um, the Tools and Resources, ProctorU, and register your ProctorU uh, quiz that way. So this uh, video in this form and this link here at the bottom uh, within the quizzes area is only for auto-recorded exams or uh, Proctor U Record Plus. So notice when I turn this on or slide it on, I actually get two more tabs over here on the quizzes area. 
So I'm going to check the Proctor U settings and I'll be able to determine, uh, this will look very similar to the Proctor U live forms to where you go through and basically tell the Proctor U representatives what is allowed or not allowed on the exam. So you have low, medium, or high restrictions. Uh, we encourage medium is a good is a good place to start, but you can always customize it. You can choose custom and then select specifically what you want. So the first option is browser tabs, and we encourage you to have that restricted to where students cannot open other browser tabs while they are in the D2L exam. The second one restricts them being able to copy and paste um, within the exam, so copy and paste using the right click, that kind of thing. Uh, we encourage you to restrict it. Now if you want to allow for it, you can choose allowed, so there's either allowed or restricted are your options. Window size allowed, if you uh, choose to have it maximized, then they're not able to open a new tab. Um, and so that is also uh, recommended as the maximized. Application lost focus is a matter of opening other programs or opening other softwares on the computer. So for the most part, you want that restricted. Uh, the only time that you wouldn't want to restrict that would be in cases where you are going to have them using software on the computer. So like a computer-based calculator, computer -based calculator um, opening up, you know, Word documents uh, to reference, looking up Excel files, or um, if it's sort of like an open note text in that test in that regard, or it very well could be uh, that you're having them use another website uh, as they are taking their exam. So in that case, you would want to allow for it. But if all they're doing is using the uh, exam itself, then you want to leave it restricted. Then you choose what's going to be permitted on the uh, on the site. So no permitted resources allowed means that you you know aren't using anything else on the website. Um, if you're going to allow for books, you can choose what type of book, what type of calculator, what types of notes. Um, and this will come up when you are uh, doing, when the students are asked to do the room scan. They'll uh, have to show, you know, their desktop and whatnot. And if that's where they will, uh, if note cards are allowed, that's where you'll be able to see. Uh, that's where it'll, they'll check against that to make sure that that is allowed. Um, websites, scratch paper, etc. Um, if you want them to be able to take a bathroom break, then you'll check that. It's very important that you check this uh, because if you say bathroom breaks are not allowed and the student leaves this that leaves the session, then it could um, it will show up as an incident that the student left the area. Um, for example, if you check that no resources are permitted and they have stuff on their desktop, um, then it's going to flag that as an incident. Now, if you say, well, they're allowed to have note cards, then um, it won't flag it because you have allowed them to have note cards. So they're going to, the proctors that are reviewing the exam are going to be checking this to see what is permitted uh, when they're trying to determine if they need to flag an incident. So you want to make sure that you uh, complete this as necessary. The next step is the Proctor U notifications. So you can choose to get an email or a text message when a certain student starts their exam. So when you click this, it'll give you a listing of all the students in the exam. So when a certain student starts the exam, it will send you um, an email. And again, that's just maybe if there are uh, students that you want to know about when they take the exam, especially those maybe with ADA or those that you you know anticipate might have a problem. If you want to know when they start the exam, you can include their name here. It isn't necessary. Um, it isn't something that is required at all the students, uh, once the student takes the exam, it'll be reviewed by the Proctor U representative and incident reports will be um, emailed to you. So this isn't necessarily something you have to turn on, but it is an option. So at this point, we have all of our settings complete. So we've done our Proctor U settings and our Proctor U notifications. And we've set up the rest of our quiz. And so it is all ready to go. Now, just as a side note, you want to make for absolute sure under the restrictions tab that you have not added in a password. Once you turn in the ProctorU um, automatic setting here under the properties tab, once you turn this on, it's not even going to allow you to put in a password under restrictions. But uh, this auto system is going to create a password um, and it will auto uh, send that into D2L to where the student doesn't have to put in a password. So you just want to make sure that you don't put in a password under the restrictions area because you're not going to be required to give it to students at all. All of that is going to be part of the automated process. When the student goes to take the exam, they'll want to make sure to use Chrome or Firefox browser. 
Then I'll choose quizzes and go to the area to take the quiz. When they select on the name of the quiz, notice that it's going to ask them for a password. This is a telltale sign that ProctorU Automate Record is on. At the top of the page, it's going to give them a notice that will say you need to install the ProctorU extension. They can choose here for Chrome or here for Firefox. I'm in Firefox, so I'm going to choose here. And the student will need to install the uh, ProctorU Firefox extension. So they just download it and install it in. Now, if they have already used this extension before, they don't have to keep adding it. It will already be added. So here it is right up here on my top um, nav bar here. So there I am. Um, so they just want to make sure that they have this downloaded again they don't have to keep downloading it if they've already downloaded it once um, it'll just be sitting up here in their extensions so the next step is to log in to their ProctorU account so they'll come in and log in if they don't already have a ProctorU account they can sign up for one here and fill out the form to uh, create their ProctorU account but they want to sign in to the extension um, within their ProctorU account Alright, so now I'm signed into my ProctorU account, so I just want to go back to the quiz, and now I'll be able to take the quiz. So now that I have the extension downloaded, I'll have a pop-up when I go to the quizzes area, and it'll just ask me to get started. It just gives me some reminders that within this ProctorU extension area, there is a help area of where I can receive help if I need it. And then this is where I will be prompted to pay for the exam. So um, they can, if they have an access code, they're able just to type in the access code and apply that. Or they're able to proceed to payment to pay. Um, remember, this is automated payment, so they will not need to schedule a new session. That is uh, scheduling a live uh, exam, which they're not doing. They're using the record feature. So they will just simply need to put in the access code or proceed to payment. That will pay for the exam, and then they'll be able to move right on into taking the exam in D2L. Once the student has completed the exam, it'll show them their grade or whatnot just as normal. And you will only receive, you won't hear anything else about it. Um, you'll be able to go in and see the grades. The only, uh, the only notification you'll receive through ProctorU is if there is an incident, you'll receive an email with an incident report uh, for those individual students.